Happy International Women's Day to everyone. Um, it's because of International Women's Day that UPS joined WIN. About a year and a half ago, two of my female leaders, Ozge and Eileen, came to me and said, our, our WLD Women Leadership Development Program is going so well that we think we want to host a forum for International Women's Day. And we want to bring in speakers, we want to fill a room, and we want to have a, an event. And I said, well, I think we're not ready for that yet. We haven't come to that point. We're, we're doing some good work, but I don't think that we have the credentials as an employer, as a, an empowerer of women. We, we haven't done enough work. So I don't really want to get up in front of a group full of women and talk about what UPS is doing, because I didn't really think that we were doing enough. So why don't you go out and find an organization that's already doing it and see what you can learn from them, and we'll take it from there. So they went out and they found WIN. And so it's ironic that here I am with a group full of women talking about what UPS does. <laughs> so it's a perfect example that when you tell a, a woman leader no, it's really just a placeholder for the eventual yes. <laughs> um, they've done a, a very good job, and, and I'm really here to tell the story of, of the UPS uh, women leaders. Uh, I'd be unwise to face a group full of decision makers and not have a, just a little advertisement about UPS. So I was assured I could just do a quick ad. And the ad is that uh, UPS uh, sends and delivers 15 million packages a day. And we do it through a series of very strong and diverse networks. This is a, a photograph that shows, a, a slide that shows you our airline network. Behind the airline network are more flights. Behind those flights are trucks. Behind those trucks are cars and people. And each of the networks are diverse and different from one another. So what we recognize is that in order to deliver those packages, we need to have a strong but diverse network. So when we think about diverse networks, that's something that goes through, through our whole company. It's something that we employ as an organization throughout not just delivering the package, but how we employ our people, how we communicate with our people. So we're looking for diversity in our customers. We don't want only big customers. Big customers are wonderful, but often their rates are low. Small customers are great. Sometimes you can get a better margin, but they're not going to fill your network. So we need a diversity of customers. We need supplier diversity. We want big suppliers, small suppliers. We don't want to depend on one kind of suppliers, so we need that diversity. We want minority-owned companies to be our suppliers. We want community diversity. We want to be involved in the community. We want to be involved in good organizations that empower kids, that empower education. We, we don't want to be stuck in one part of the community. And finally, we want a workforce that is diverse. What we know is that we, we serve our community. And in order to serve our community, we have to look like our community. You, you cannot have a company that doesn't match up with its community. And we've learned that as we've gone around the world and opened our businesses. So UPS started its business in 1907, and women came into the workforce very early. Here you see a picture that women were doing clerical work, sort of typical work for that day and age uh, for women, administrative, bookkeepers, telephone operators. And then came World War II. And if maybe you saw the movie A League of Their Own with Madonna when the women took over the baseball, well, they also took over driving the trucks and delivering the packages. This is an old company, so history has made us adjust ourselves. So, this woman started driving trucks, and they started calling them <clears throat> Brown Bettys, because in English slang, buddy means friend, and Betty is a woman's name. So these are the Brown Bettys. They were the first ones that got out and drove trucks and delivered packages. These unfortunate women <clears throat> were given uniforms that we deeply regret. <laughs> and I'm sure she'd be mortified if she knew that she was part of our history with that tie. But uh, as you can see, they did all kinds of different jobs. They were, they were washing trucks. They were delivering packages. They were sorting packages. And, uh, and, and you'll be happy to know that our female uniforms now are, are much nicer, much more, much more gender appropriate, uh, if you will. So um, then along came the first female pilot in the United States, a commercial pilot, I should say, uh, Emily Warner. And she came to work for UPS. And uh, her uniform is in the Smithsonian Museum. Also, an interesting fact I discovered while I was researching for this project is that the first African-American woman to become a captain was also a UPS pilot. So we, we were making great progress. And we had a lot to be proud of. So what was the problem, right? UPS rocks. We employ women. Well, what we realized is that we were employing women, but we were not creating women leaders. And that the representation of women at the top was lacking. And we didn't have, we had a few women at the top, 
but the big problem was that we didn't have a pipeline of women to choose from when it came to selecting them to come into the top. And we employ from within. This is a company that likes to reward the driver who becomes a supervisor, who becomes a manager, who becomes the CEO of the company. And, and usually our top leaders are people who have delivered packages at one point in their career, men and women alike. So what we discovered, and this was I think in the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, was that our pipeline was drying up. The women were leaving us, <clears throat> not just for the competition, and not just for the money, but they were leaving us because they didn't see their futures. They were, a lot of them were becoming entrepreneurs, they were going into other kinds of businesses, and a lot of them were going into different kinds of businesses. So what, what should we do about it? They got a group of men and women together <clears throat> in Atlanta, our headquarters, and said, how do we solve this problem? So that's when WLD, Women's Leadership Development, was started. And they brought the women together and talked to them about why are you leaving, what do we need to do? And what they discovered is that they were missing building blocks in their careers. They were missing networking. They were missing education. They were missing a lot of different things. And they were able to articulate through each other back to the organization what it was they needed to build up um, their career. So WLD was born uh, with the aim of, of retaining qualified women for leadership roles in the company. We wanted them to be represented at the senior level. We wanted them to be in the pipeline. And we wanted to be recognized as the employer of choice for men and women alike. In the very first year, turnover reduced by 25%. That, that's, that's amazing. So I think just the acknowledgement that women were an important part of the organization and we wanted them to lead was, was a very big start. We took it global in 2008, and in Turkey, we started uh, our WIN program in 2010. So uh, all in all, it was a great success. At this point, we have about one-third of our management are women, representing about one-third of our workforce. So it's quite proportional. So we're looking for the women to gain connections, connections with each other, business connections, and community connections. And these are the three pillars of the Women's uh, Development Forum. So let's talk a little bit about the women in Turkey. So this is our group of, uh, of women leaders in Turkey. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our experience, what worked and, and what didn't work. Um, First of all, we launched uh, about three years ago, and I would say we had kind of a failed launch. We gave a presentation. We had a female leader from Atlanta who came. She gave a great talk, but it was in our conference room. It was much like every other meeting. It wasn't that special. It wasn't that different. The women listened, kind of uh, interested, but maybe a little bit reluctant. And, and I said, this is up to you. You need to run with this. I'm not going to lead this. You're going to lead this, but I will support you. And they said, great, we like the idea. And then really nothing happened. And what I think happened was that no single person stepped forward to take the role of leader. There was not one woman who was willing to say, I will do this. I'm going to run with this. So we had a second launch. The second launch, we had a management committee member, Terry McClure. She's one of our most senior executives. She's the African-American woman in the middle. She's our legal counsel, very sharp. She came, and I said, hey, we have the, one of the most senior females in the company coming to Turkey. We need to have a win event. But we didn't really have much of a win organization. This time, about three or four women stepped forward together, and they said, we will do it. And I think, for us, that was kind of the secret was to get a couple of people to get together because they needed the confidence that the company was behind them. And to stand out alone, there was not a, one person who wanted to kind of take, take the, and run with it alone. But three, four people, they did it. So they got together and we had a launch. But we had a great launch. We had a room full of people. We had some good talks. We went to lunch. We had a very, very nice afternoon. It was joined by our, our most senior executive, Mr. Haluk Under, the founder of Unsped, a real Turkish man uh, who came to the event and showed that it had importance. And then suddenly, I could see that the women in our company were saying, this is kind of a privilege to be part of this organization. This, we can learn from this. This is something that we want to do. So the launch was really important. The first launch was normal, average, nothing special. The second launch was an event. It was, it was an activity. Secondly, we researched inside the company. I, I think that the WIN uh, leaders did a great job. They went department by department. They brought in the most senior female and her boss, if it was a, man, a woman or a man, it didn't matter, to give a presentation on HR, on marketing, on industrial engineering, on sales. And they were 
we had symposiums where, where each department came in and talked about what do they do, who are they, how do they do their job. So there was a great deal of internal education. They had field trips. They went to warehouses. In some cases, they rode in the package car in those <coughs> brown uniforms. They got out and they really discovered what this company, UPS Turkey, was all about. And this process took about a year. After, and at the end of the year, we actually had a small forum. It was internal, but we invited men and women to our auditorium, and we had a forum, and we had a, a panel of women who talked about the challenges of, of being a working mother, the challenges of being a woman in business, and we had one of our most senior men, our finance manager, come in and talk about his experience of being married to a working woman. And it was really successful. It was very well done. You know, we had some of our own WLD women uh, speaking on the panel and, and uh, moderating the panel. So after a year, it was time to go out. So I said, OK, we've done it. We've discovered everything. They were probably getting tired of one another. Time to go out and see what's out there. That's when they found WIN, and they found other organizations. Our, our WIN organization is doing a lot of volunteerism. They did a Toys for Tots uh, kind of um, a program where we collected toys from around the country and we delivered them to kids who didn't have toys. Um, they visited, uh, of course, WIN and uh, over overwhelmed WIN, uh, I think, in a wonderful way. And, um, and they've been out to see customers, which is something that I really like. Now, they're going on sales calls and they're opening up the doors. You know, one third of all businesses worldwide are owned by women. Women-owned businesses is one of the fastest growing segments of, of business as it grows. Everyone's talking about the BRIC countries, you know, Brazil, India, China, Turkey. We can talk about women-owned businesses because women-owned businesses are growing faster than the emerging markets if you look at it on a, on a global basis. So we want our women leaders to be involved in the commercial aspect of our business. We're a service company. If you want to be a leader at UPS, you have to know how to sell. You have to know our services, and you have to have a commercial mind. You, you, you simply must. So that's where they are right now. And in the next year going forward, they're going to spread out even further, get more involved in, in, in language clubs, in volunteerism, in, in industrial engineering clubs, in whatever it is that, that they're interested in. So the goal now for the group is to continue to diversify and spread out across Turkey. Um, we have WLD in Istanbul, in Ankara, in Izmir, in Adana, in, in, in a few of the smaller cities. Uh, when we have special events, we allow certain of our uh, uh, WLD members to travel in for the event. The events are considered uh, important. And, and, and I think giving importance to the event is a very critical part of allowing the uh, organization to be successful. And then I would say my final tip is really you have to reward the leadership. The, the women who stepped forward and said, we're going to run this for you, we're going to drive this, we're going to get organized, we're going to develop a relationship with WIN, they need to be recognized and they need to be rewarded. Um, we sent one of our uh, WLD members to the Olympics for a two-day uh, visit to the Olympics and a day in, in Wembley, I think, to, to the tennis, because she'd done an amazing job as a community organizer. She entered a competition that was a global competition and she was selected as one of the winners. Um, she was supported by her WLD colleagues so that her application was really strong. And she went all the way and, and managed to get that trip. And then other uh, small recognitions for the toys programs and things like that. And then the ultimate recognition, it, frankly, is, is a promotion. The ultimate recognition is to be given an additional opportunity. And the WLD environment gives the manager the opportunity to see leadership in action. You can also put your WLD program on a challenge. We had a problem with churn. Our customers were leaving us too quickly after we signed them up. And we were concerned about that because we spent a lot of time and money bringing new customers in the door. So I went to my managers and I said, you know, bring me your best man. I want to solve this problem. But I don't want you to do it. I want you to bring me someone who will do it. Amazingly, and by coincidence, they each brought me a woman. So their best man happened to be a woman. And I looked around the room and I said, OK, this is kind of like a WLD activity. So Let's run with it and see how you can solve my problem. Um, they did a, a marvelous job of identifying the problem, coming to me with recommendations. They didn't do it as WLD, but they happened all to be women. But because of WLD, they had a lot of experience working together. And their communication was good. Their camaraderie was there. So they were really able to um, move quickly and, and, and to be effective and, and impactful. 
So that's us, that's the WLD. I would say uh, to the people who are listening in the room who have colleagues, um, it's a very simple concept. Uh, you need to be supported by your manager. Somebody needs to step forward and become the leader, or somebody's needs to do that. Then you need to get to know each other, and then you need to step out and, 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 and run uh, outside the community and be, and be a part of, a, of something bigger and something greater. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you on International Women's Day. I was, I was thinking to myself this morning, you know, who are the role models, the women in my life who I should think about today? Who are the ones? And they're the usual suspects, you know, moms, sisters, teachers, bosses. But I also thought about the men in my life who were great role models. Uh, my dad, my grandfather, who um, always told me about the importance of equality and treating everyone equal. So. Uh, in their honor, I make this speech.